hello friends welcome back to another video on this channel in today's video i will show you guys how you can control an l298n motor controller like this one without using an arduino with pwm signal directly from either a servo controller like this one or more in most cases including mine uh, uh, like a radio control receiver that you'd use with the off-the-shelf transmitter instead of using an arduino to do that so basically the problem is uh, the L2910 expects a 5 volt input and output signal, uh, input signal, sorry, uh, which like flips in polarity in the input pins here. And based on that, it will provide the given power, in which in this case is 12 volts from this battery, to the motors uh, respectively 1 and 2. So it's a dual motor controller, dual channel controller. Now, this uh, servo controller and in fact the normal standard RC transmitters they provide something called a PWM signal which is like this this type of a block type thing which basically the length determines how lo long the uh, like the uh, basically how much power it should be in PWM based devices so what I am going to do is I'm going to use one of these basically what this is is just the mo b board from a servo uh, as you can see here I just took apart a ser standard RC servo and I took off the motor inside so if you will look at this this goes fits there so basically all you have to do is unsolder the motor because the way a servo works is actually it has an input uh, PWM input signal from the three green uh, three wires as you can see like your uh, motor like brushless motor uh, controller would and then basically it has a potentiometer on top which measures the uh, Amp, uh, like the resistance based on where the position of the uh, horn is the servo horn so when it moves the potentiometer also moves based on the resistance the uh, signal uh, like the mic board knows where the horn is and based on what the PWM signal is telling it it can then calculate where to move and uh, move the uh, servo uh, by powering a small little motor here now what I have done instead is I have taken off the horn uh, and so now the this doesn't move anymore like it used to so instead it's just at a fixed state and basically I have joined two wires to the uh, motor uh, connection points so now uh, as you can see here this is the same thing is just wrapped up in some shrink tape as you can see the uh, potentiometer part there and the input here from sorry the output here this is the motor driver part and this is the part where uh, the uh, output wire comes up I'm not going to use this one because it's just too risky I just did a lot of work actually because the reason I took this apart in the first place was because this uh, wires were broken and so I ended up actually snapping the motor in half so I decided to do this with it instead this one I just had lying around for a long time so I decided to now finally show you guys so that's why I'm just going to use this one I don't want to ruin my uh, uh, solder work because I actually don't have an arm or anything I just did this by hand this tiny little soldering part here uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna leave that it's the same thing uh, it's just a different servo so like uh, the color of this is different but basically the thing is the same so let me show you guys the setup as you can see I have powered on this this is the standard servo uh, tester thing like your same signal as that so I'm going to first put it onto this maximum this this gives you plus 11 volts on the, uh, to the pins so let me guys show you I have my multimeter here as you can see I'll take the pins of the multimeter put prong the uh, port just it's one, quite difficult doing it with one hand just a second and this has this okay uh, I'm not sure if that's the right orientation the uh, voltage polarity might change anyways uh yeah i think it's the wrong polarity yeah there you go um it's showing minus 11.64 volts actually the polarity is wrong like the uh, pins are switched on this side is output one as you can see so anyways as you can see it's here it's just connected up through this into here no extra as you can see if i move away the multimeter wires as you can see the this thing is just connecting the uh like the two pins which tells it to run at full power instead of having a uh, uh, another PWM signal there it's just directly connected up because uh, I want just maximum and minimum if if you want to you can actually bridge these pins the ground and the signal pin actually over onto this part and it will give you even more like precise control as well if you want but I've just decided to directly connect them up 
so as you can see there is nothing there this is just the power to the battery and this is the thing i just told you and this is the controller going up from here into the standard servo box and going up to my power supply here so now i'm just going to flip this so now it should be plus 11.1 volts if i prong the same pins again uh, so as one second just so as the black one before this was the hold on where is it not wait uh, so i guess just struggling a bit here with trying to prong these with one hand anyways i think that's yep there it is plus 11.5 volts uh, just a bit yeah the reason if it's not 12 volts is because that's the standard like drop down because it's running from the 12 volt supply instead of having a separate power supply so that's just a standard l 290 anything thing it's nothing to do with the controller itself so yeah, as you guys can see is this away oh not break something uh as you guys can see this is the way it works uh so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please be sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel and yeah i'll see you guys next time